good good morning bonjour uh uh good morning G. Of Guler. I'm uh, John Bell from the Research and Innovation Department of the Commission. And what we're going to be doing today, this morning, is having really an interactive conversation about uh, a new idea in Horizon Europe, which is to have a mission, a moonshot, on adaptation to climate change, including societal transformation. And you will hear a lot more about this as we go through uh, the process. Uh, but just to let you know, uh, we'll have uh, our Director General, jean Eric Paquet, coming here soon. This is a very important part for us of how we're going to go about dealing with what should be a publicly desired goal uh, in where research and innovation can actually help. So the way we go about doing this is as important as what we're talking about. And today you're the first people who'll be involved in an ongoing process across Europe over the next few months in working out alongside all the other things that we're doing in research and innovation, policy and investment at national, European, and international level. What would be the one thing or the couple of things that we could do that you believe would make a really big difference to society uh, that research and innovation can bring about um, that others can't? And what we will be doing in our process this morning is uh, we will have a number of members of our mission board. So the European Union has created a Horizon Europe program uh, for the next few years for science, research, innovation. We will have uh, uh, emissions, which will be explained in a moment by our Director General and their purpose. And to guide those missions and to guide us, those of us who are working in the administration, we have uh, a mission board of world uh, uh, leading experts in different areas, some of whom are here this morning. And we'll explain a little bit later how we're going to go from an initial conversation into a discussion session. So I'll now give the floor to my Director General, Jean-Ric Paquet, who with perfect timing is going to explain everything. Yes, yes. No, in fact, I, I, I'm not going to explain much because uh, you will tell us um, where we are heading uh, with this, uh, I mean, enormously important and enormously challenging mission. I mean, all five mission areas are complex, diverse, uh, with sometimes convergent or not convergent ideas on what we should really focus the mission on, but frankly, climate adaptation, the mission board members, is the single most difficult one. So um, what I want you to hear from me is just two or three things. The first one is that the missions, you heard it, I, I'm sure, uh, also yesterday from Carlos Moedas, the missions are in fact not about research. Huh? This is a, these are the research and innovation days, but the missions, they are not about research. Huh? Research and the research agenda will enable the outcome of the mission, but the mission is about a concrete delivery in society. We are looking, in terms of the mission objective, at a European, or possibly broader, common good, which then is to be delivered over time. This is what the mission is about. Within that is then obviously a key step, which will be a research and innovation agenda, technology, experimentation in society, additional knowledge, uh, you will tell us, and the mission board will tell us, and uh, which then in turn depends on the objective. So first step, what do we want to achieve? Second step, and it's the same discussion, frankly, what is the research and innovation agenda needed? But then the implementation is using the output of the research and innovation agenda in a, in a broad policy toolbox across probably several levels of governance, depending on what the objective is, at EU level, national level, city level, regional level, let's see what you set as an objective. Uh, and this will then happen out of the research and innovation um, uh, solutions, but on, of course, a much broader pattern. Here the challenge, frankly, is uh, for me that um, the difficulty is to set a mission objective which captures the imagination of the public. This is so important, including because with that, uh, we will also then, I'm sure, energize and bring together industry, member states, um, and many other actors in the research and innovation agenda. The idea is not just to put Horizon Europe money and hope it works. Huh? The idea is with that to also amalgamate more research than just Horizon Europe. So it must capture the imagination of the public and of the actors, but they also must make sense in the much broader policy setup of climate adaptation. Huh? The mission is not supposed to solve climate adaptation. Huh? I'm sure you're aware of that because I think this would really be uh, just not uh, reasonable and realistic. And so 
setting the mission objective must be part of a broader uh, policy discussion, which is ongoing, and must really add value, leverage, uh, including by this mobilization, for the very uh, urgent uh, climate adaptation policy debate. Voila, that's what I wanted just to say uh, at the outset, because I think this is really what uh, the challenge of the mission and the beauty of the mission is all about. And uh, climate adaptation is one. Uh, soils, oceans, and cities, it's all related. Take this into account as well. John, best of luck. Thank you. So how we're going to run this very straightforwardly is we're going to have a couple of uh, uh, colleagues here to help frame the discussion. Then we're going to hand it over to you in groups where you'll have members of the mission board and commission colleagues to animate discussions with you. Um, so in one second, I, I will hand over to my colleague Elena Wiesner Malinowska, who's my colleague from DG Klima, to talk about adaptation. And that will be followed by Professor Daniela Jacob, who's a member of the mission board and whose distinctions would take me the entire morning simply to, to read out. But you were in the hands of very distinguished colleagues. We've also got colleagues in the mission board from different areas of expertise, different parts of Europe. Anne Runel, Hein Pieper, Marx Klikluna, Bartoli, and Yaroslav Misiak, and, and they in different ways will interact with you. I would say one thing to you. The, one of the most motivating things for us is when we think about John F. Kennedy in the 1960s and thinking about setting something which could transform the way society uh, thinks about itself. We need to put a man on the moon. And somebody going into the building in uh, Cape Kennedy, uh, accompanying the president, meeting the cleaning, the, the cleaning uh, man on the floor, and asking him what he, what he was doing as he washed the floor, he said, I'm sending a man to the moon. So I would ask you, in the spirit of this conversation, it's not about writing a research program. It's about thinking about a way in which this enormous systemic change of climate adaptation, this is a new world we're going to be moving into. What would be the kind of idea that would mobilize society using research, innovation, investment in a new way to make Europe a better place to live and work and be in? So I hand over to my colleague, Eva Malinowska from DG Klima. Thank you. Hello, good morning to everybody. So we hear it from many politicians, economists, uh, leaders, that climate change represents a major risk. And we have heard it also very vocally from the United Nations Secretary General Summit. Yet there are emitters who represent at least 50% of emissions in 2017 who didn't make, uh, did make uh, big, big commitments over these days. And so climate change is already affecting us in many pronounced ways. Is it uh, for people? Because we have experienced the warmest summers over, over these years. Is it also impacting nature? You may remember the wildfires, uh, forest fires uh, last season, and this year was certainly not different. It was 11 times the 10 years average. And as you know, forests are precious because they represent very important carbon sinks. So they are important part of our reduction efforts. And it has also quite some impacts on economy. We have experienced over 16 years at least 12 billion per year in economic losses. And to be underlined that only one third of these losses is insured. So this is why adaptation is needed. And I must say, we cannot just distinguish uh, our reduction uh, of emission strategy from the adaptation. We shouldn't make them uh, in isolation, because you know very well that reducing emissions on its own doesn't suffice in front of all the impacts we have. And the adaptation action in isolation would become super costly in the future because as impacts unfold, our capacity to deal with them is limited. But there are good news, I must tell you, coming our way. And this is to say that adaptation action pays off. The Global Commission on Adaptation issued a major report in past weeks, which essentially says that the benefit to cost ratio of a prepared adaptation action is as much one 
to 10. One in cost, 10 in benefits. For instance, when it comes to early warning systems. We have also the other example that is fresh in our memories. In 2003, France experienced major heat waves with a toll on human lives of 15,000. This year, it was 10 times less, which shows that proactive adaptation policies are important. So what do we do at EU level? Uh, we uh, do believe very strongly in climate neutrality. And as you know, the Commission has issued a major vision for being climate neutral by 2050. But we still represent 9%, and that's why we need to work together with our partners through different partnerships. And we have realized and are increasingly uh, realizing we need to step up our adaptation action. Our adaptation action is framed by the 2013 strategy. And this strategy is mainly about member states' action, cities' action, climate proofing of EU policies, and better knowledge for better decision making. So if you wish, for me, it's all process driven and we have yet to see the outcome. A great success in time to be emphasized is the covenant of mayors in Davir that puts cities together. And as many as 1,500 cities already have adaptation plan. And there are even cities who already undergo some stre stress testing to see how they react in the face of climate risks and hazards. And of course, what we have to do is to ensure much more this resilience adaptation reflex also in the private sector. Because adaptation cannot be an afterthought in the business venture. It needs to be uh, put both in the short term and long term decisions and its investor choices. So indeed, for all these policies, what we need, we need much more research, we need excellent science, we need disruptive innovation, and of course, we need solutions, we need outcomes. And uh, as uh, both Jean-Éric and John said, we need to capture the imagination of citizens in a mission on the moon. But I would like to bring you back from the moon to this earth, because what we need to imagine in this mission is how a modern man and woman can live on a warming earth, on what some say in a hot house. So we have to look at both the behaviors, the social science, and this is what I see increasingly populating the area of adaptation. I need much more psychologists, social scientists, doctors, because adaptation in need, indeed is a lot about the transformation, about different choices, but we need also to bring in hard technology solutions, because we cannot buy uh, technology actually to hamper uh, the emission reductions that are being uh, pursued by other parts of, the, of our climate policy. So I take this as a very important opportunity for us to think about adaptation, to think about it positively, because adaptation is both planning, is both action, and if I'm pushed to something, I'm ending with loss and damage, not a positive outcome. And I even invite you to join me and my colleagues from the European Commission and the members, the honorable members of the mission board, to present today uh, for, for uh, some outcomes in these targeted discussions in the breakout groups. And we will report at, uh, from these group talks at the end of the session and gather the feedback that is very, very precious for us because we are at the mo defining moment for the adaptation strategy that should be announced in the coming months together with the Green Deal. The Green Deal that should uh, increase the ambition of Europe to really bring us to climate neutrality, but hopefully also a climate resilient society in 2050. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Elena. And now I would like to hand over to Professor Daniele Jacob, who is a member of the Mission Board, who will explain a little bit what it is we're trying to do here. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here. First of all, uh, let me uh, introduce uh, some of the Mission Board colleagues, uh, those who can be here today. And I'm very glad that they are with me here for this occasion and that we can interact with you. So we have here Ms. Anne Runel from uh, the Startup Reverse Resources. She actually is an expert in, um, I would say, widely circular e economic questions related mainly to waste from from uh, fashion and uh, uh, fashion industry, uh, let's say. Uh, so, so here you hear the first word, which is important to notice for today, that's circular economy. Then we have um, Mr. Mark Vatoli from the Bank, Bank of Valletta, an economist here. Here um, you hear the second important word, and that's financing area and economic, economic growth, financing transitions. So there's a very important question uh, and a topic which needs to be taken into account. Then we have um, uh, Mr. Hein Peter he Pieper here from the Dutch Water Authorities. And he, of course, represents the area of critical infrastructure here from the water sector. But we have more and more critical infrastructures to think about for the next couple of decades ahead of us for today and the vulnerability of the future, like energy infrastructure, water infrastructure. And then we have Professor Jaroslav Musiak from the European Mediterranean, Euro Mediterranean Center of Climate Change. He is here with his expertise on vulnerability risks, economic related, um, I would say, assessments uh, to uh, lower the, the risks, but also to enable conditions and to make transition feasible. So this is a very quick and very short introduction. They are, of course, expert in many, many areas, and they will tell you when they are with you in the discussion. We had, uh, and I myself, I'm a meteorologist. My name is Daniela Jakob. I'm uh, leading a climate service center, but I started actually with cloud physics, uh, looking at climate change from a global to local perspective, and I'm heavily concerned about local climate change and how we can get prepared. The first meeting of the mission board happened about two weeks ago, and they all members were, were around, and we uh, discussed uh, uh, quite a bit our tasks. We tried to set the scene. So what actually should we think when we hear the mission board uh, uh, framing, which says climate change adaptation and including societal transformation? And that, of course, are the other important words for you to notice. So we are talking about climate change adaptation. And we had at length a discussion in the first session of the mission board that we, of course, include mitigation aspects. So we cannot distinguish between adaptation and mitigation in a separate way, as we do often from science. You find many scientific papers. They are looking at mitigation of greenhouse gases and adaptation towards changes. But now we have not only to adapt to climatic changes, but society has to adapt to a new lifestyle. And that is where we connect to societal transformation. And that's the last important word today, and f noticing this. So we would like now to um, get engaged with you. You're kind of our, I would say, start to get engaged with uh, European citizens. Um, we also have started, uh, I, I released an email address, a blog will start so that I can get engaged with uh, German speaking uh, citizens. And I'm pretty sure in, in, uh, the other members will do similar things. And the European Commission is trying to get engaged with as many of you as possible. Today, we would like to focus on, on your recommendations out on how should we, what should we look at? What is our frame, our focus? What are your concerns when we try to phrase missions which will then finally be underpinned with research and innovation and implementation? Because we would like to see how we can contribute to make a difference on the ground. And where do you see major endeavors to connect research and innovation with regional development? These are questions which we'd like to start to discuss with you. And ideally, you would also tell us if you already have some success stories. 
where we have already changed into low carbon um, industry, into change our business model towards a more sustainable lifestyle so that we can also share good practices. With this, I would leave it for now. And uh, I'm really looking forward to discuss with you. Thank you. So this is the uh, bit where you earn your breakfast. Uh, the coffee was actually not too bad uh, this morning, which is a new one for the commission. Um, so what we're going to try and do here is really, this is your moment to really you know, talk through uh, around two particular issues. We're going to have members of the board and uh, some commission colleagues in each of your groups. And it's really to have an active discussion between now and about quarter to uh, uh, 11, um, or sorry, quarter to 12, I should say. Um, we don't have a time machine, unfortunately, in the Commission. Um, to look at uh, two basic questions. You know, what should the objectives of the mission be? And what does success look like? And it's not necessary to have a very complex technical discussion. Out of all of your discussions, we are going to have to produce a narrative which you know, I can explain to my, my, my kids or I can go home to my mother in Ireland and say, we've got this great idea with all of these problems that we're facing. We're going to do this together and we're going to, it's going to mean that we as a European Union, the people who are here faced by these challenges, will be able to have this as a place to land. So what, is, what does success look like? Um, and I leave you with that. The European Union in the end is about doing things collectively which would be slightly improbable individually. Uh, we, we, we used coal and steel to build peace after the war. We build the world's largest single market. We put together a continent that was divided for a, a generations. We build a, a currency. And now the chance, the next mission for the European Union, is to be the world's first climate neutral continent. And adapting and preparing people and having something to live for as a better way of life in adapting to that is a key to this. So no pressure. Over to you. So at the end of the, so as you go through the discussion, you can write down your main points on post-its, and then they will go on the walls, and then we'll have people from each of the groups to take us through what they are. OK? Off we go.
Voila, lovely creative buzz. You have five minutes for, sorry to interrupt, you have five minutes for one of you to be ready to make a one minute presentation. Okay, thank you.
votre chemin Louise. Louise, John. Louise, est-ce que vous pouvez donner un... J'en donne un. Ça va. Dames et Hira, as the as the scientists tend to tell us, the fun is over. So, uh, yes, and now the inspiration begins. So we move from emotion to reason. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to have we're going to bring a microphone around to each of the groups. We're going to start here. Uh, you can stay where you are. And we'll give the microphone to somebody in your group to, uh, to speak for one moment. So, uh, Louisa, est-ce que vous pouvez donner à madame uh, le, le micro, s'il vous plaît? And after, after Daniela, we'll come to Sven in the next group. Yeah. Voilà. Daniela. How to save the world in one minute. Yeah, thank you very much, John. It's not me. I have a volunteer here. Thank you very much. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm delighted to open the floor. Uh, in one minute, we decided to focus on three main ideas. One related to in engaging with people and politicians. We have a matter of governance and social engagement. That's the first idea. The second idea is related to uh, modify our behavior with more information in order to develop a neutral lifestyle and also to export the EU models to other regions. And the third idea is related to the uh, mitigation of risk and adaptation of industry, because they are essential to our economy. We had a maritime focus, and we considered that we have to prepare ourselves to the sea level rising by uh, enhancing coastal protection against erosion and developing offshore structure. Thank you very much. So, uh, Sven, it's very timely, the last point there, Sven. Yeah. Here in the group, the surprise was very little technology. Yeah, so it was basically the discussion centered very much about uh, the stakeholder involvement, stakeholder engagement, urban planning, uh, enabling a better planning, toolboxes for a better planning. Then in how far can these toolboxes have to be, uh, to be localized with a local aspect, how the role of local knowledge. And then the other point, are we European with the mission or are we North-South cooperation where the need might be even more for better toolboxes and for localized toolboxes? Some technologies played a role in, on, on the, but it were really side aspects. A desired outcome, in a, we did a, a second round in this way. The desired outcome was really urban, better urban planning for adaptation and what would be needed for it. Uh, citizen involvement for startup solutions without prescribing the technology upon which these solutions uh, would be based with a preference for nature-based solutions in the narrow sense of definition. So not enzymes for, but better spatial planning. And then as a success indicator at the very end, in 30 minutes, save the world, the success indicator for the mission is launch a social movement. Great. Nothing easier than that. Oh, Barricad. Uh, Andrea. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you to the members of the group. Of, to of course, one minute is not, it's not a lot of time. I mean, there are brilliant ideas here, and uh, the discussion were, and uh, the actions that were proposed, of course, that they were around the uh, CO2 reduction, uh, mitigation, and education. There were interesting proposals, like, just to give an example, uh, um, it's moving towards uh, a transport uh, with zero emissions, uh, also, um, the idea of uh, uh, having the houses uh, built with 100% sustainable materials. So uh, we try to formulate in a way that really can have an impact on uh, 
uh, everybody in the street when the title of the mission or the title of the action is proposed and the indicators are here uh, mentioned education came uh, uh, as well quite uh, quite important and also uh, looking uh, also at both uh, land and uh, and ocean when uh, when addressing the uh, the action um, I think that for the moment I will stop here uh, all the ideas will be circulated and uh, uh, all the details are, are here. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Andrea. Um, Margarita? Thank you. It was a very interesting discussion for this group as well. We touched on several ideas, some of which have already been mentioned, such as the need to um, include uh, citizens um, in the discussion for the um, and, and increase citizens' awareness of uh, sustainability through education. And so, how adaptation cannot um, go forward without um, education and involvement of society to achieve societal transformation. We touched on new technologies, um, for example. Um, for uh, achieving carbon neutral energy or the data sharing, the need to share uh, big data um, for um, uh, achieving climate adaptation, as well as the challenge to um, address um, local local realities um, as opposed to uh, national solutions. So to look for solutions that can be adapted on, on a local level. We also touched on the health sector and how there is a need to um, prepare the health sector for climate change. And in the end, we discussed how the future looks like, how we would like to see um, uh, a planet adapted to climate change. It's a planet with more nature, more nature in the cities, multi-level cities, green cities, um, where population is aware of their choices and where uh, vulnerable groups do not um, unevenly uh, take the burden of climate adaptation. Thank you. That's great. Um, Annette? So, um, our group started with a more overall reflection of whether this mission should be more in the area of mitigation, adaptation. Obviously, adaptation is plan B. So, how do we find a balance between actions that don't get us to plan B while doing something to be prepared? And um, there was also the comment that Obviously, for mitigation, there are also other missions that need to be taken into account. They suggested to develop a vision first before going into objectives. And the vision would be obviously to have climate-proof cities, climate-proof societies. Now, on the objectives, broad ones were something like reduce CO2 emissions and change. Change products, product production, change policies, change behavior. There was much about social issues, people. How do we develop, um, uh, wait, how do we ensure and secure the quality of life? How do we develop better matrix for measuring economic activity, so the green domestic product instead of the gross domestic product? And um, how do we get people better prepared for all these changes? So this is more on the objectives. And specific examples include to develop testing cities that are fit to adapt, develop buildings that are well adapted. On the impact then of all these objectives would be then have um, alternative models for growth, have early warning systems and climate services that help us adapting, overall have a service, uh, sorry, a prevention culture embedded into citizens. Citizens are all involved in trying to prevent the worst, in trying to uh, um, act in, uh, how I say, in implementing the measures to cope with changes and share values, new types of values. So I think this is it in, in a nutshell, Great. but there's more detail here. Thanks, Annette. And, and, and the more detail we will feed into the, the summary of the meeting here. Um, where Miguel Angel has the misfortune to try and write it all up in a, in a coherent way in 12 languages. Uh, uh, Ilias, 23 languages actually. Hi, we are a small group, but we were very diverse. So we have people from Ministry of Science, Technology, beyond Europe even. We have people from like architects, we have people from Climate Kick, and it was very good discussion. So I'll focus only on the things that were not mentioned before, not to be repetitive. Huh? So. The understanding here is about behavioral change that can actually come from other sectors than uh, 
green sector, like health. So the behavioral change is very important. The keyword is local communities, local communities that we need to empower to understand. And it goes from more knowledge to them through the modeling and simulations. Can we get models, so success criteria, can we get a model that would work on a local community level? So city level or regional community level. Uh, we talked about smart transport for all. So let's connect all capitals by 2027, 2029. All capitals by speed trains that are affordable for all. Or another measure was 400 kilometer area should be and, and anywhere you want to travel within less than 400 kilometers should be possible by train in an affordable way. Then we talked about adaptation of the building. So what does it mean for us as people and having our own housing? And we should move from just purely energy efficiency of adaptations of buildings to climate adaptation of the buildings. So for example, not only looking at how to put shades outside of the building to cool the house other than air conditioning, but also to take your heater from the cellar and put it in the attic because your house may be flooded. So whatever is the critical infrastructure in the house should move up in the house. So kind of things that energy efficiency people would not tell you. So we need to think beyond energy efficiency. And uh, the last, maybe the most powerful success of the mission could be agreed measure on individual and local level. What is waste and what is CO2 footprint so we can, as local communities, measure it, compare ourselves, and drive ourselves to do better. So can we actually introduce a measure that would go from individual level to local level, where we measure waste, because material is more important maybe than CO2 when it comes to climate adaptation, usage of material, reducing uh, waste and reducing CO2 footprint. And by that also was mentioned to reduce the number of heat islands in the cities. How can we make sure that the heat islands we're creating in the cities can be reduced. Thank you very much. Uh, Piotr? Thank you. Uh, we had a very rich discussion, uh, also bearing in mind the, the, the backgrounds from research institutes, industry, meteorological services, IT, education, uh, people working in Europe and outside of it. So uh, uh, I'm just going to mention a couple of points. Uh, of course, we talked a lot about policy uh, that is going to be very important for this uh, mission on climate adaptation, but also a role for high tech, including IT solutions in the future, uh, having a strong focus on education, especially of the young generation. Uh, these are the ones that are going to be most influenced and most uh, uh, affected by uh, climate change. Uh, there was a very strong point on the local dimension and projects and uh, demonstrations that can take place locally in cities in particular. Um, we should not forget the, about the industry and the role that the industry is going to play in our strive for adapting, in adapting to climate change. So the role of industry, perhaps engagement of PPPs, private, partners, private public partnerships, or joint undertakings in the future under Horizon Europe. Um, the question on how to measure, uh, yeah, that's that's a big question mark. Uh, I think an interesting point was raised here. Let's see at the dimension of health and how health can speak to a citizen, how we measure the success in the future. Uh, and three other things, uh, the land use or maritime use, how do we take that into account in the climate adaptation mission? Uh, how do we incorporate early warning systems and disaster risk management? And finally, how do we use and cre create and use tools that will help us in this project? Thank you. Thanks a million. Uh, Nasira? One minute, folks. We're being thrown out of here in about six minutes. Thank you. So. Uh, here also in this group, uh, there was a lot of conversation around information and education. There's, there are plenty of resources, but this still, we are not yet there in terms of uh, making it uh, available in a simple fashion to the citizens. So uh, another area of uh, conversations here 
type of solution, a lot of discussion on the affordability of the solutions that we propose in terms of uh, adaptation, so these need to be affordable. We don't want to see uh, phenomena like energy poverty or climate poverty, so we've got to think about it. Uh, also, uh, strong feelings about uh, the infrastructure. Uh, very important to make sure that existing information becomes climate neutral, its adaptation and new infrastructure. We've got to set ourselves a deadlines so that in terms of government, uh, local or uh, national, we get there. So this is about the measurable uh, impact that uh, we are trying to achieve. Um, also, uh, uh, interesting conversation on the impact on health. Uh, we've got to work on that. We can measure uh, this also through, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the percentage of protein we are taking and things like that. There was also uh, a lot of conversation around uh, perceptions and behavior. So now here the proposal in this group is that we've got to work uh, uh, towards uh, transforming the perception of Adaptation is a sacrifice, I don't take my bike, I don't take my car, sorry, but it's an opportunity for you to get better air, health, better, uh, better health and better environment and better air, right. uh, etc. So these are the areas. That's great. Thanks a million. Uh, Elena? Or... Um, it's, it's really amazing to hear all these ideas coming up. We also had a very uh, stimulating discussion in our group. We spent a bit of time in the beginning uh, defining adaptation, and I, can, I, could, I could sense echoes of these discussions in taking part in the other groups. We tried to pin the discussion much more closely to adaptation rather than mitigation in general, given the uh, availability of resources to tackle mitigation mm -hmm. in the wider Horizon Europe space. Uh, so we really um, focused on, on, on adaptation more specifically then. Um, we talked about um, the availability of species of plants, uh, crops that will be uh, more suitable in the adapted uh, new climate that we're, we're facing. Also the spread of diseases and also the adaptation of health systems uh, that need to change. We also talked about regions and cities being hotbeds of innovation, so therefore um, the the rollouts or the implementation of these solutions that the mission will, will come up with need to be anchored in these places. Um, we of course also um, spent a bit of time talking about nature-based solutions. This is something that's echoed in, in several groups. Uh, but we also talked about the technological, uh, the, the, the limitations to nature-based solutions because some of the adaptation that uh, we, we are facing, that some of the adaptation needs we're facing um, cannot be tackled only by nature-based uh, ones. We talked about behavior as well, uh, teen anxiety and mental health more broadly, um, and um, in behavioral research in the sense of taxation and nudging uh, and insurance. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Now, of the, we have four people left to go and we have three minutes, so I would suggest you raise things that have not been raised by other groups. So, uh, Hein? Hello, I'm Petra. So the things that have not been mentioned, very difficult to say. I want to emphasize the, what we discussed about uh, connecting different disciplines around solutions. So solutions is, uh, and communication, of course, and uh, including the, the youth and making advantage of the youth movement, but also the old. So don't forget about the old and the, the youth, uh, the, the possibility of um, outreach, uh, um, the message from the youngers going to the elders uh, to transform. And um, we also had uh, the regarding values, we were thinking that this mission should have the, the mandate to, to visit values uh, also in the, in the light of economic growth. And also to, um, we talked about uh, the competition of solutions, so to, to use the, the spirit of competition in the right way in the framework of, um, in the context of of, of climate change. That's brilliant. Thank you, Petra. Uh, I mean, all of your conclusions we will be inputting at, at the end. Um, uh, okay. Mark? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Hi, I'm Ken Fjell. Uh, we spoke of uh, many things uh, that can be tied together with, for instance, a revenue neutral incentive system that uh, does not influence the politicians' funding 
and it's based on research. The taxes and subsidies are primarily based on research, but we also talked about citizen engagement and that they're disconnected. So part of it could be that citizens have a vote on those uh, areas where we are more unsure of what the benefits are, where citizens could vote and influence the system. Uh, it could also go towards funding of small and medium enterprises and where we would, uh, would want to see uh, incentives and, and subsidies go for new innovations or food and agriculture, uh, what type of, of uh, policy changes we would like to see there. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. One minute. Uh, surprisingly, the uh, majority here was researchers, but we spent all this time talking about citizen engagement, how to take research closer to, to people. Uh, we talked about positive message, no fear, uh, action-based research instead of theoretical research, um, um, connecting gaps between organizations, between uh, different uh, um, projects, works being done, linkages between different SDGs, um, that we should not work in halves, but as a system. Uh, also about um, measuring the progress, how to do measure the life cycle and systemic, uh, like do system level analysis. Um, and we talked about a lot about education um, on different levels. Um, thanks. That's great. Thanks, Anne. And last but not least, Yaroslav. Thank you very much. Uh, just very quickly, uh, first of all, thank you very much to my group. Uh, it was very diverse and very vibrant with a lot of very good ideas. So thank you for that, guys. And uh, um, in addition to what has been said, I mean, we, we are sort of thought about combining different uh, environmental objectives, so, uh, like uh, you know, into a societal transformation. So we looked uh, beyond the climate adaptation, and we tried to put together the uh, net zero carbon objective, the um, circular economy, the uh, reuse of natural resources, uh, no waste, the uh, disaster resilience, and the, uh, you know, to put it together under the label, label of something, you know, transformative regions or cities, and uh, uh, engaging the local citizens, designers, the innovators, the companies, the businesses, uh, uh, so as to contribute to this transformation. That was probably something the addition to what has been said before. That's great. Thank you very much. I'm going to give the last word to Daniela because she's less likely to be thrown out than I am. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, let me sum it up. I think it's very easy to sum up. Um, what we heard is get engaged, develop new ideas and change and share. And I think the most important is pave the way into a new era of life and leave no one, no region and no sector behind. So it's up to you. Let's go. And you can see some of our mission boards in the cabane for the mission uh, uh, outside and around. So do feel free to interrupt people and, and, and raise your points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merci.